is what Abraham Lincoln said. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. We of this Congress and this administration will be remembered in spite of ourselves. No personal significance or insignificance can spare one or another of us. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. We, even we here, hold the power and bear the responsibility.
say that from these other days we take increased devotion to their cause, for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. Privileges 
voluntarily. Individuals may see the moral light and voluntarily give up their unjust posture. We know through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given up by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Frankly, I have never yet engaged in a direct action movement that was well-timed according to the timetable of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. For years now, I have heard the word, WAIT! It rings in the ear of every Negro with a piercing familiarity. This WAIT has almost always meant never. We must come to see with a distinguished jurist of yesteryear that justice too long delayed is justice denied. We who engage in non-violent direct action are not the creators of tension. We merely bring to the surface the hidden tension that is already alive. Like a boy, we bring it on the open where it can be seen and dealt with like a boil that can never be cured as long as it is covered up, but must be opened with all of its must flowing ugliness to the natural medicines of air and light. Injustice must likewise be exposed with all of the tensions its closing creates to the light of human conscience and the air of national opinion before it can be cured. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the vitriolic words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. We must come to see that human progress never rolls in all the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and persistent work of men willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, Time itself becomes an ally of the forces of social stagnation. We must use time creatively and forever realize that the time is always right to do right. Now is the time to make real the promise of democracy and transform our ending national energy into a creative song of brotherhood. Now is the time to lift our national policy from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of human dignity. This is what happened to the American Negro. The Negro has many pent up resentments and latent frustrations. He has to get them out. So let him march sometime. Let him have his prayer of pilgrimages to the city hall understand why he must have sit-ins and freedom rides if his repressed emotions do not come out in these non-violent ways. They will come out in ominous expressions of violence. This is not threat. It is a fact of history. We will reach the goal of freedom in Birmingham and all over the nation. Because the goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up with the destiny of America before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth. We were here. Before the pen of Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. For more than two centuries, our forebearers labored in this country without wages. They made cotton king, and they built the homes of their masters in the midst of brutal injustice and shameful humiliation. And yet, out of a bottomless vitality, they continued to thrive and develop. If the inexpressible cruelties of slavery could not stop us, the opposition we now face 
will soon fail. We will win our freedom because the sacred heritage of our nation and the eternal will of God are embodied in our echoing demand. Luther King, Jr. 